Sup guys, He King here bringing you another manga review on this week's Boku no Hero chapter 349. So yeah, I just did uh, the last chapter which was supposed to, which came out last week. I failed to upload that and I just did it recently, just now. And now the new chapter has come out so now I'm reading that. So I might actually make this a double video and put both chapters together as one review so yeah guys with that said remember to like and subscribe for both review chapters in this case so yeah you'll get 348 and 349 together sup guys he King here bringing you another manga review on last week's uh, Boku no Hero chapter I believe it's uh, 348 yeah, for 348 guys. So yeah, before I start, remember guys to like and subscribe as always. Please do, it helps. And yeah, let's just get into this chapter then. So yeah, this chapter mostly focused on where we left off with Deku last time, where he got captured and pulled in by Toga into the uh, fight arena that they're fighting at, which is uh, Gang Orca's Aquarium, which is located very, very far from where the actual final battle with Deku and Shigaraki is supposed to take place. And Deku gets this moment with uh, Yubiti and, uh, what's her name, uh, Froppy, to talk with uh, Toga, like, and she expressed that she wants to be Deku's girlfriend, which was, yeah, it's one of those moments where it's like, okay, this, this girl is nuts, uh, but there is a tragedy to, to Toga that I do understand. And it's going to be interesting to see what uh, how Deku is going to respond to this. So yeah, um, we start the chapter with just Deku like just being utterly surprised. Uh, uh, Midoriya Izuku, the ninth and current wielder of One for All, he is the greatest asset in this battle. He's also a vessel to the Quirks supervillain. Uh, all for One desires most. Uh, ever since the dawn of Quirks, All For One has been operating in the shadows, not only in Japan, but all around the globe, trying to get his hands back on One For All at all costs. So yeah, this chapter is called Unrequented Love. So yeah, I kind of went in saying that uh, Yubiti would confess, possibly, but that doesn't seem to be, be the case, unfortunately. So yeah, well, this, well, this chapter is really mostly just focused on Deku trying to talk it out with Toka and pretty much explaining his views on it, and Toka just being disappointed with the answers, pretty much getting a somewhat similar response that you you know you Yuriti gave her. So yeah, uh Toga just like like man, she's cute, she is cute, but she's also crazy. And Deku he just lo like he's dumbfunded really. Like uh, we get this little text box in his eyes, no matter where he went or what powers he had, he still viewed himself as a he viewed himself as a loser. Which is kind of a it's um I find it kind of sad though, like, um, when we see Deku early on in the series with Hardy's quirk, yeah, he, he does come across like, I, I'd imagine he would see himself as a loser because everyone else around him had quirks. But you can kind of see how, like, in terms of popularity that changed, like, well, once he went to the Hero Academy, uh, and, you know, you, when, when you had that sort of comparisons between him and Bakugo, you know, Bakugo was the one getting laughed at, was Deku, and everyone was just sort of chilling with him and saying hi and respecting him. So you can kind of see the sun, like, shift to, like, you know, Bakugo thinking he's going to go to the best hero academy and everyone's going to be worshipping him and telling him how great he is, and that doesn't, that wasn't really the case, like, upon first uh, impressions, do you know what I mean? So it's really funny to see that, and it's weird to see that Deku still views himself as a loser here, like, he isn't, like, he's not a loser, he's a very, he's a very uh, positive guy, really, like, so, I, I don't see why he still views himself as that. And for Togo just to admit that, like, it makes sense, it makes sense, you know, ever since we first met, you were so beaten up, just like my first love, you look exactly like him, you're so cool, Deku-kun, I want to become you, let me suck your blood. So we get this creepy-ass panel, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be saving this one properly and use this for the thumbnail, actually. But this, yeah, that, 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 damn, that cover of her, that panel of her, like, it is super cool. Repeat. Like you can just feel the obsession that Toga has for Deku just oozing out of that panel. Like seriously, Horogashi did an amazing job drawing this panel. Like if he wanted to view Toga as this very crazy obsessed, like what is it? What's the word? Yandere is it? 
or Sudere, I think. Uh, he's done a marvellous job here. That's a very creepy, powerful panel in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I kind of went into this kind of hoping that maybe we, you know, Toga would get an answer that she would like. But uh, as the chapter goes on, that, that doesn't appear to be the case. So yeah, uh, and Deku, like, he gives his response about what he believes it means to have a girlfriend or boyfriend. Basically to be a couple, to be in a relationship. Uh, being a couple means going to the amusement park together and holding hands and sharing uh, uh, creeps, right? Like, even Deku's asking this. Like, he's not even saying it, he's asking it. Like, on, on one hand, like, uh, you know, he's saying that's what it should be. But the other, the other hand, he's also saying, Is, isn't that what it should be? And, you know, you've got Yuruti there just staring, listening to this. And Toga's just like, if you ask me, being a couple means being one and the same. Makes sense, right? Nothing else will fulfill my desires. The second impact. So yeah, as they're talking, obviously, there's a fight going on. There's a fight going on. You've got Gang, Orca, and other heroes in this area, in this very location right now, you know, taking on these Numos. And uh, you've got Deku here, like, you know, who has to be somewhere else, chatting with Toga of all people about, you know, her wanting to be his girlfriend. And it's like... Again, amazing panels. You got like you got impacts. You got debris falling. You got people falling, and uh, you got people fighting in the background. You just got the waves hitting her, and Toga just being caught cool in the middle of this, and and she's like, "Say, hero, what do you want to do to me?" I mean, honestly, there's a lot of things I would personally do to you, Toga, if you allowed me, and there's a lot of things I would probably let you do to me too, if you were real. And, you know, I'd be all for supporting your bloodlust. I really would, you know. I like to think I've got a very good, clean, tasty neck. Snack on. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, Toka is definitely crazy, but at the same time, I understand where she's coming from. This quirk of hers, like, it, it's done her, it's built her to, in a way where it's like, she can't help it, do you understand? And she, she's seeking for validation. She's seeking for a hero, specifically a hero to understand her. And for said hero to basically like, like, you know, affirm that, you know, it's not your fault and I get exactly what you're doing and you should be yourself. But, you know, there's always a but in this, but there has, it has to be done in a way that you can still be yourself and not hurt others. The responses she gets from, at least that she got from Yubiti and now Deku, it's not what she is seeking it's not what she you know wanted and it's kind of like the answer that she probably has heard many times from other heroes especially you who kind of went into that whole idea of you know you're hurting people i'm gonna hurt you like that's just how it is like that's the mentality of how a hero in her mind thinks when it should be a case of i want to say you know it should be more i want to help you i want to help you save you and I like to think Deku is in that sort of mindset. He, you know, as we as we had that chapter with him and Yuviti, uh, you know, he did say that like he obviously he understands. There's a there's a there's this quality of him wanting to understand the villains as to why they do what they do and what they are. And you know, it's, it's very similar to Spider-Man's mindset. Basically, he doesn't want to kill the villains, and if he can, he wants to help them. I like to think it's very similar to that. Deku is very much inspired by that kind of ideology, and that's a good thing. It's not bad at all. But there also has to come a time and point where it's like you have to make up your mind and think, you know, when is enough is enough? When am I going to make the judgment call and take these people out? Like, because not everyone can be saved. So, and yeah, again, uh, Togo is pretty much asking the same thing that she asked Yubiti. Like, she remembers that, what do you want to do to me? As they were struggling in that final war arc, basically, that we got. And yeah, oh. Uh, Obviously, the, as this as this happens, they lose Togo in in the splash in the in the in the explosion that happens of, of water, and he's asking where she is, and he's like, I too, and he's like, I too wanted to become strong like All Might. I understand the feeling of wanting to be to be like someone else very well, and how it can fulfill your heart, Himaku Togo. And keep in mind, his danger sense is not activating. By the way, uh, that was an important thing. His danger sense does not activate when it comes to Toga for some reason because she loves him. She like really, really loves him, but her love is very warped. It appears. Um, but then again, I don't really feel like I could ever become one and the same with you. You see, I have never once thought about hurting the people I care about like that. So he says that. He says, you know, I could never become one and the same. Obviously, he wouldn't be able to become one and the same. And he's like, I wouldn't. I never thought about hurting the people I love. And Togo just gives this very, you know, she gives this very sort of typical sort of innocent smile. There's a sadness there. Again, you can feel the sadness coming out from this panel. 
uh, you know, you know, in that one panel, it's like it's the very opposite of that panel. Like there's the there's the crazy one, obsessed, and there's the very sad. Just like yeah, that's I kind of knew that's the or like knew that's the answer you're gonna give me. That's the kind of feeling I'm getting from this that she's having, and uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, you can feel you can definitely feel the sadness emitting from it. And and she's just remembering these things. Why can't you just be normal? Please try to live a normal life. And for someone like her, she can't live a normal life. It's impossible. The quirk that she has, it doesn't allow that for a normal life. And and I think again, I think she's just remembering other heroes as well in this. Uh, how, how, why, uh, we've already read this, how pitiful, if you want to live as you please, then you better be prepared to face the consequence, consequence, uh, consequences, and yeah, she's just remembering those words, and it's, it's just, it's just pretty much the same thing, like, oh, I want to be myself, but I can't in this world, and I have to face consequences for doing what, you know, what I want to do in terms of, because that's who I am, I can't do anything else about that, um, uh, I guess it's it's sort of a warped version of telling someone like who comes out in it and it's like you know that's who I am and people are arguing no you can't do that you can't be straight that's not how it works and it's like but it, you know that's who I am that's I'm happy that's you know I'm gay I'm happy sort of like that's kind of the talk I feel like that's sort of maybe may a metaphor for that and other metaphors as well in terms of what what it is but again it's this quirk she can't it's not her fault and I get that I really do and I kind of wish Deku and Ochanka would would try to talk in a way where she clearly is someone that needs help, but not not in the sort of like mental crazy way. Like there's an insanity there, but again, it's caused by the fact of having to isolate herself, having to isolate these abilities, and having to isolate what what she is. And it's not working. It's just causing damage. And you know, as we go in. She pretty much affirms that yeah, you, you are you you know to to Ochanko and uh, Deku that they're the same, just like Mama and Papa. And at this point, yeah, she snapped like Deku and or, you know Ochanko. They realize that she snapped. She's gone now. This this was the point. Like this was this was a very, in my opinion, a pitiful point for the heroes, for these two especially, to sort of maybe try and help redeem her, to try and give her a reason to maybe think and walk a different path and at that I think moment is now gone because you know she just puts on she she snaps on her mask and she go you, you know she says all oh, you all think that only heroes and those they save are valued as people the rest don't even matter to you so yeah I think what Toga says here is actually really important you all think that only heroes and those they save are valued as people the rest don't even matter so it's like it's almost and even Deku sees that her face was super sad just then, and he sees that, yeah. And she tries to attack Deku. She goes for this attack, and honestly, it's 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 mental. Like she's trying to get him from behind, but Deku, I think, manages to dodge it. And then Ochanka comes in. But yeah, before I continue, yeah, that mindset, like of how, well, of the kind of people that the heroes value more, and everyone else is just like, yeah, beneath them really. And it's like, yeah, she does make a good point. There is a good point there. Like the heroes. They don't try to help the villains. They don't try to help people like Toga. They don't try, you know, any, anyone who isn't what they assume to be, like someone that needs help. It's like screw them, like, beat them, kill them, whatever. Like, and I get what Toga's saying here. And uh, I think I feel like uh, I need to again. I need to sort of read and really think about this. So, and yeah, we get this moment now where I think I think at this point, Danger Sense activated for Deku, by the way, because uh, because he was able to touch that attack that she was going for from behind. I think because she it looked like she was trying to stab Deku from behind, but he dodges the attacks. And I think the reason for that is is because he's Danger Sense activated. Because uh, she pretty much says here, ever since I met you, I just couldn't stop thinking about you. I'm not gonna think of you anymore. I'm through with you. I only thought about Deku Kun, but now I don't care anymore. Um, yeah, so yeah, she goes, yeah, she's done. She's pretty much admitting, I'm done with you guys. I'm done, like, uh, loving you, and I'm done trying to explain my love to you and trying to get you guys to understand, you know, why I do what I do, why I think what I do. And, uh, yeah, this, uh, we get this very awesome chapter, really, like, this awesome sort of, sorry, this action where Toga's trying to stab Ochanka with her, like, needles. I don't know what it is, it's, it's the needles that, they look like they're sort of propelling themselves, propelling themselves, like, uh, I think they're the sort of, the syringes in it that she's got, like, the tendrils. Um, 
that have come out of our costume really with the, that are connected to the syringes. If the world did nothing but reject me, then I might, then I'm, then I'm entitled to do the same. And yeah, and yeah, she pretty much tells Aruka, Aruka, Aruka san I'm disappointed in you. I thought that at least you'd be understanding. After all, a chunko-chan and I are the same. It's kind of weird that she says that she, you know, after all, a chunko-chan and I are the same. It's kind of weird that she says that, but I think it's more a case of Toga knows that Ochanku loves Deku. And for us, in that kind of way, they are the same. They're sort of similar in that uh, respect. And yeah, she goes, uh, someone kicks someone like, it looks like it's Froppy. She comes in and she kicks uh, she kicks Togo away before she can hurt uh, Ochanku. And uh, uh, what's her name? Atsututs or Froppy. We'll say Froppy. Froppy hops in. Sorry, I'm late. And she's like, and Deku's just obviously he's concerned about Ochanku. Ochanku, she got, she got here. And she's like, are oh, you hurt? I'm fine. It's only skin deep. We need to get that knife back. So yeah, uh, Togo did manage to hit Ochanku with her knife. Uh, obviously, she's probably got a bit of the blood, um, and we get the reason for why they sent Togo into this environment in the first place. Because a, she's on, you know, she's very unpredictable and far away, you know. So, you know, keeping the damage to a minimum, basically, when it comes to her character, because she's the, again, she's the kind of character that can pretty much steal other people's quirks and use them against them. So, uh, yeah. And you got Froppy pretty much telling Deku, leave now Deku, this isn't the time nor the place to be talking about romance. Yeah, pretty much add on because that Shigaragi fight is happening and Deku is standing here having this sort of philosophical talk with Toga and it's like, it's not it's not working, like, you need to leave. And uh, Froppy pretty much saying, we'll stick to the original plan and rely on Yuruviti who has had the most encounters with Toga, don't worry, we'll take care of this. And uh, Ochoko t turns to, and this is kind of the moment where I assume people would think this is what Ochoko is going to admit, uh, you know, Ochoko, Ochoku, sorry, I'm saying the name wrong, like, Uruti, you know, she turns to Deku, and, you know, you'd think she's going to confess her feelings for it, but no, uh, she pretty much says, Deku-kun, deal with Shigaraki, and uh, we've, we've got this. And I think in that moment, Deku himself realizes what Ochoko maybe feels like. It's just this very powerful thing like nice little she's giving him the smile like we've got this like go on and you know uh Deku's remembering I guess that makes both of us quite the old fools then I think he knows he realizes that yeah this is it it's a nice uh counter you know counter balances it uh, to uh, or comparisons to Togo you know you've got this chapter you've got Togo professing a love for Deku and explaining why and him just basically rejecting her and then you've got a uh, UVT who he's got this close relationship as well and he can just tell from the way she looks at him, just says things, or the way she says or tells him things that she clearly likes him as well. And he realizes that he understands that. So it's like there's one that's talking with words, trying to get someone to understand, and there's one who isn't really saying much of anything. And there's no need because there's no need for them to say words, it's just the actions and the looks that she gives him says it all. So it's like it's a nice sort of comparison to that. Do you know what I mean? It's like. And uh, yeah, we just get this very nice again uh, of a panel of Toga here, just like slouched down, and uh, and and the the syringe whips, whatever, just waving about. It's crazy, and just like, why is life so hard? Even though I love you so much, and UBT just shouting to Deku, run, and you've got Deku just blitzing out of there. So it looks like he's gonna he's gonna attempt to run on the water to blitz through through and back to the uh, city, I guess. But yeah, this was a very interesting, it was a very decent chapter. Uh, not action-wise, obviously hardly any action uh, that we got. But it's mostly sort of this, uh, just this confrontation, this talk, this emotional sort of talk to, for the characters to have. And it makes sense to have it. But it's just kind of sad that because, um, you know, Toga does speak sort of facts. She does admit certain things. And it's just sad that the heroes don't try to do or talk to her in a way. That they can try to get her to understand like uh and yeah, that's kind of depressing but it, yeah overall it is a decent chapter and it's it leaves us with uh what is it froppy and ochanka to take on togo basically at this point and you have to keep in mind that togo obviously is, you know she's got tricks up her sleeves she's got twice as blood as well and that has to play some sort of big role in this fight but yeah um it's just kind of sad to see where it all goes now it's like at this point it's like togo's uh, you know, relationship, or as you, as you call it, has been reaffirmed. It's been, you know, she realizes the truth now. Like, yeah, they're not gonna love her. They're not gonna love her for who she is, sadly. And yeah, the only way to deal with that is to basically kill them now at this point. But yeah, um, overall, decent bloody chapter. I liked it. 
uh, and I can't wait for next week or technically this week's chapter that we're getting now uh, chapter 349 so yeah overall guys uh, that was my review on Boku no Hero chapter 348 I hope you liked it as always guys remember to like and subscribe and yeah I shall see you when I shall see you Hopefully uh, this by this week, you know, we get that One Piece chapter we should do. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see how this fight in particular goes as well. Uh, and to see what is happening with the other matchups as well. Because yeah, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. <laughs> I really want to go and see what's going on with Shoto and uh, Shoto, Shoto, Shota, Shota and Darby really. I want to see that fight, man. I want to see those brothers fight. Like what's going on there? And I'm still crossing my fingers that we get some sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, inclusion of stain and uh gentle criminal and a bravo like i want those guys to get in there like i want these guys in the final fight somehow to help out but yeah and spinner of course we still don't know what's going on with him that's very that's a very worrying factor when it comes to spinner so yeah what's he up to and where he is he but yeah decent chapter can't wait to see more as always guys remember i shall see you when i shall see you take care and bye this chapter continues off from where we left off before proceeding to, well, back to the fight with Toga and Oro Chanka and Froppy, and then cut into the next main fight that's taking place between Shoto and uh, Darby. So yeah, let's go through this. We get an awesome cover page with Bakugo and Mirko, you know, Horigashi just loves drawing Mirko, man. Like, the poses he does for her are just sexy. Hmm. Mm, look at those fires and that type. Mm, mm. God damn. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> but yeah, enough about that. Uh, we continue on and we we get to Deku who is rushing off to face Shigaraki. He's leaving the uh, island that he was on and he's just blasting through the waves, avoiding seagulls and seagulls avoiding him as he does. And he's basically using the, uh, as he says it, he's using the seventh float ability and the third's far jin. Uh, to basically and his own air force uh, for propulsion and balance he's he's going way too slow basically um, and he wants to get there very quick and since there's nothing to grab on because he's in the middle of the freaking ocean he can't use black whip so he's at a very big disadvantage here but he does have an ace in the hall which is this 100% uh, with flux one with flux flux on with what is it with flux 100% I can make it there fast for sure and that's when the uh, second uh, you know, all, uh, one one for all news uh, talks to him uh, before Deku can push himself, and the dude's like, you know, you you need to calm down, okay? You need to relax, not lose your head, uh, because if you use this ability 100%, you're gonna destroy your gear, and when you get to that final fight, you're pretty much gonna be screwed. Relax, calm down, you know, play it safe. Trust your friends, okay? If you use my ability, you know it's going to cause problems because this ability has involved thanks to you sort of combining them all into one and uh, what I'm getting from this is that whatever ability that the second has uh, it, it's to be used as a last resort and if Deku uses it now he's pretty much screwed himself out so this is obviously something that's being set up to be used in the final battle against Shigaraki and the second's telling him not to use it now otherwise it's just a waste plus if he uses it now he's going to lose all the gear and that's probably going to get destroyed so I imagine when we get to that final fight and he uses this quirk ability from the second we're going to get a very rad looking Deku of just bits and pieces of the suit properly falling off or destroyed in there when we get to it so yeah that's something to look forward to but he's pretty much telling him to control it, to wait for it, and to just, you know, take take the safe route, to just take it easy. You know, you're going slow, so be it. Trust your friends, you know, trust them to survive and, you know, handle things be while, before you get there. So, yeah, that's that. And we then cut back to the island with Ochanka and Froppy. Uh, yeah, we get this little, you know, we get this little moment of Froppy saying, that's, you know, that's good. Midoriya won't be able to ignore this girl's words, which is right, you know, he... he he wanted to listen, he wanted to understand, but there are far more pressing things going on at this point, and Deku needs to deal with that 100% more. And then, of course, there's probably, you know, to herself thinking that besides listening to feelings that have been hidden for so long, being confessed, it's so awkward. <laughs> it's funny if I were to say that. Um, I always feel like Froppy always says things as they are, you know, she just blurts things out, like, um, she's never one to keep things to herself, I think, so, you know, good for her, and it's nice to see at the, this moment between, you know, this fight that we're getting between our, I like to say, our best, uh, few more characters, with Achoka and Froppy versus Togu, 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 just, you know, it, it's fitting, it's fitting. 
But we get this moment with Toga basically, she's saying, you know, she's had enough of Razuka, she's had enough of, uh, you know, Froppy and of Choka, you know, although I love you, I'm done with you. Uh, I'll be what I set out to be, I'll carve my own path. Isn't that right, Jinko? And she's touching the blood bow that's in a little packet, becoming, you know, belonging to Twice. So obviously that's going to come into play here. Uh, how they're going to resolve that, how they're going to fight that when it comes to it, I don't know, but it's going to be interesting to see. And it ends with her saying, I am Toga Himiku, I have no need for heroes, so please just... Sorry about that, guys, I've, well, I'm having repairs done tonight at home, so yeah, I'm waiting for the people to get here to fix it. But yeah, sorry about that, uh, distraction. Uh, wrong one, by the way. So, <laughs> anyway, back to this. So, we, 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 end, we end this moment between Toga and Ochanka with Toga pretty much declaring that I am Toga Himiku. I have no need for heroes, so please just disappear, okay? And that's pretty much her resolve at this point. She's given up on these guys and she wants to wipe them out. And then you've got Ochoka coming in going, No way, I'll follow my own desires just like you. As Oraka Ochaka, so yeah. This is our this is our showdown pretty much. This is the setup for the showdown between these two girls and Froppy included. And then we cut to the battle of a key Mio, the Kamiyo ward where obviously, you know, where uh, All Might had his fight with her uh, all, all for one. And yeah, just fire and yeah, destruction being caused. And you've got Darby there just standing by the statue of as the heroes are fighting all these weird gnomas. You've got a gnoma there that basically looks like Godzilla, except the spikes are coming out of its chest, I think, and it's got like a freaking uh, mace, uh, a, a mace tail, a tail for a mace at the tip. Boy, it, it's yeah, it's weird, and your heroes, I think, getting stabbed by the spikes and that. And, you know, yeah, Darby's just being his usual self and just taking in the chaos. Uh, Ida not being able to get anywhere because of the fire. You know, Darby's just, like, using the flames to protect himself. And Ida not being able to get there because his engines will overheat if he gets to it. So, yeah, he he, he can't do much. And, uh, yeah, we cut to... Yeah, we cut to Darby just again. He's just he's blowing himself up into the air, trying to get out of the reach of the other heroes. Just taking the sights, like like the little jester that he is, because he does sort of come across as a jester, sort of the guy behind the scene, just sort of sitting there and watching all of this and just burning the heroes, stopping them from getting to him. And yeah, he's just he's just taking shots at them. Your third son with only three of your guys. Is this all you can muster against me, father? And then we get introduced to Endeavor, I guess to, yeah, he's to Endeavor's sidekicks, Akido and uh, Omnima. And of course, Burning is there as well. So yeah, the, the, them three along with Shota are taking on Darby. And you know, you've got, um, I think this is, uh, I think this is Kido. He's telling uh, Onimar to stay back. You know, kid, stay, you stay back. You can't take this much heat with that body of yours, right? And uh, I'm assuming this is Onimar saying, I'll be fine. I can control the, tra tra the, the, the trajectory. The trajectory? <laughs> Uh, of almost anything, so redirecting that, re redirecting tra the trajectory of the hot air around me has become second nature. I do it all the time, and the bandages come off the dude's face, and he's like calmly and rationally. I've been doing this for over ten years, and will continue to do so. I've been ordered by Old Man Endeavor to help, so help I shall provide. I'm liking, I'm liking this dude. I'm liking his resolve. Like, yeah, I'm gonna do what I can to provide the help I can give. And then Burning gets a little moment to shine, where she's like, I don't give a, you know, toss if this has to do, if this has to do with that old fart and the family problems. He's been honest in every job he's taken to this day, that and that includes even now. So we'll entrust that duty to you. We'll support you with everything we got. So yeah, them three are pretty much saying we're gonna support you, Shota. This is your thing. This is your game. This is your. This is technically your fight, and we're just here to offer support in the best way that we can. And it, and I just love Burning's responses to Shota. He's like, I appreciate that Burning, and she's like, I don't need no thanks. It's a waste of energy. And then Shota just going up to his older brother and like, Toya, Darby, you know. Don't get me wrong, I'm not here because someone else ordered me. I chose that I would be the one to stop you. So, you know, it's 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 sort of it's somewhat poetic against it. The, the the youngest son fighting the oldest son, you know, younger brother versus older brother, like um, you know, the the old versus the new, if you will. And yeah, Darby's just, he's just burning himself off constantly, and he's like, he, you know, and George is determined, you know, he doesn't want his dad to do this, he doesn't want the dad to take out the son, because, like, it's, it would make sense for Endeavor to do this, but at the same time, it's too painful, do you know what I mean? At least with Shota, he doesn't really have that relationship with Toya to know who he really is, but he wants to know him, he wants to understand him, so he's got this chance to sort of get to know his brother while battling him out and trying to stop him in the way he can. 
and you know Darby's just like throwing these things at him. He's that these so-called facts. You know, can't you see that that makes you dad's puppet? And Shota's like, if that means that he can take his mind off you and keep being a hero, then so be it. So yeah, uh, Shota, you know, taking that extra step to both respect and help his dad and do what he can on his own side. Do you know what I mean? So that's really nice to see. And Darby's just like, I see. And, and we get this little explanation for him, basically, like the situation that we're having right now when it comes to the different ideologies of these villains. In the end, this war is made up of individuals fighting each other, not nameless soldiers acting on someone's orders. This is the result of everyone's feelings exploding at the same time. And we see these panels of, uh, of you know, Toga, when, it, when it's referred to someone to change the world. And then we finally see Spinner, for Christ's sake, we see Spinner, he seems a bit, I don't know, he seems a bit more muscly than usual, I think. I don't know where he is or where he could be, but he's there. We see him finally. Others want to destroy it. And then, we, of course, at the bottom we get Shigaraki. Deviants to society that have been suppressed and accumulated over time. The absolute limit of the supernatural society. Um, yeah, it's crazy, man. Uh, that's what I am, what we are. And, and you know... You know, uh, Shota responds, if you were alive all this time, why didn't you come home? And that's a very good question, like, what did he do? What happened? Why didn't he come home? Like, we, we've never been really explained that. We've never really seen what happened. And what this, the, the way this chapter ends is pretty much Darby pretty much saying, okay, like, you want to know the truth? You, you want to know that, huh? Fine, I'll tell you. I might be a villain now, but I'm still your big brother. I'll tell you everything about how I became Darby. And... And yeah, we get this crazy, ridiculous panel shot, this final shot of Darby, and he's basically melted his face. Like, uh, if, if those were patches or whatever, or skin grafts keeping keeping the, the burns hidden, or the, the, the worst of it, I think it's fallen off now, because we really see the damage that it's done to his face. Like, he has no cheeks here anymore. I mean, he look, he basically looks like Two-Face from the Dark Knight. Like, like he's, this half of his face literally looks like Two-Face. Uh, the, uh, the teeth and everything are exposed. Honestly, this is kind of what I want the Joker to look like in the new Batman movie. I've seen the deleted scene, by the way, and I wasn't very happy with the look that we got. But this is kind of what I want the Joker to look like. I just want him to look really deformed and screwed up. But uh, yeah, what we get here with Darby is just insane. Like, like how bad was it that he got burnt? Like, it's, it's it's very extreme, and, and you know, you have to wonder, this dude must be in pain, right? I mean, you, you can't go through this without having constant bloody pain. Like, I'm assuming he's taking freaking meds or whatever to suppress it, but like, this can't be, this can't be healthy. I mean, that's literally fourth degree burns right there, right? Like, or is there even more higher degrees that you can go to? But yeah, the reason why my flames never extinguished and surpassed even those of Dad's masterpiece. So that's what we end with, and we end with uh, the tagline, the origin of these flames will now be unraveled. So yeah, it looks like next chapter, 350, we're going to be getting Dobby's origin story, basically. I'm assuming it's going to be called, uh, like like we got with the other chapters, like uh, maybe Toya, uh, whatever, and then origin uh, for it. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see this. It's going to be interesting to see the backstory. It's a nice way of... Uh, sort of humanizing these characters, these villains, before we get into the final elements of these fights. But yeah, the fights have been pretty much set up. We've got we've got Shota versus Darby with three of end of our sidekicks. We've got Toga and Froppy versus uh, Toga, and she's going to be using twice as blood. And you know we don't know how that's going to affect the battlefield, but uh, yeah, we'll get into it. We've got Bakugo, Mirko, and others uh, versus Shigaraki, and then we got all the top heroes like Blue Genus and Endeavor taking on uh, all, all for one. And then, you know, uh, our ace in the hall, the main the main attraction, the main show, Deku rushing in from the island to try and get to that fight. So yeah, uh, things are getting very intense now. They, they're heating up, no pun intended. Uh, pun intended, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a pretty decent chapter. It's a pretty decent chapter. It's more set up, if you will. Uh, it doesn't really progress the plot in any way, uh, maybe except for the foreshadowing and conversation that we have with Deku and the second in user for uh, one, one, one for All. So that's definitely that's definitely obvious foreshadowing. We're definitely going to be sub getting something with that quirk involved, and then obviously we're getting the setup for the fight with Toga, and now we're getting the setup with the backstory for Darby before we get the actual lead up to the fight itself. But yeah, very good chapter. Can't wait to see where this goes. I know a lot of people are arguing about how rushed this feels. 
but I'm liking the direction so far. Maybe when the anime comes out, you know, next, you know, in a few months' time of season six or, or maybe season seven, because it honestly does look like that season seven might be the final season actually. But it really depends on how much they adapt with season six. Uh, and if they're going to do it in a way where, where it literally sets up this final war arc to come with season seven, and if, if it doesn't, then maybe maybe they can do something where they sort of give us some filler episodes where they can just sort of like do a slow pace build up to the final war and actually develop these characters just a tiny bit more and get a bit more interactions before you know all you know the shit hits the fan basically. But more than but honestly, realistically speaking, we're just gonna, we're probably most likely just going to be jumping into that uh, straight away after the end of season six. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see how this wraps up, like because right now, like this is this is just the beginning. Okay, we're still in the beginning stages of of this final war, basically. But yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just you know I can't wait, man. I can't wait. It's it's getting intense, man. It's getting intense, and I yeah I can't wait to see where this goes, man. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it's just ah uh, the excitement, man, the excitement. Maybe not too much excitement, but uh, at, at least I'm still invested in this. If that makes sense. But anyway, decent chapter. Can't wait for next week's. And as always, guys, remember to like and subscribe, share, comment down below if you want. And yeah, as always, guys, I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care, and bye.